Welcome everyone um, to uh, this CTA uh, Red Purple Modernization Project public meeting. Uh, my name is Jesse Thomas. I'll be moderating tonight. And um, we appreciate you taking some time to engage with us. Uh, this is uh, the second of a series of four meetings that we're doing this week uh, for each of the Lawrence to Bryn Mawr Modernization Area stations. So last night we uh, met speaking specifically about Bryn Mawr. Tonight is Berwyn. Uh, so again, thanks for being here and taking time to learn about the project. And uh, we'll be doing some question and answers and a presentation. So before we do that, I'm going to give a uh, talk about the logistics of this meeting and uh, kind of lay out a format of what we'll be doing. And then we'll be hearing from uh, Alderman Osterman of the 48th Ward uh, before we move to our presentation. So. On the logistical side, um, we are recording this meeting, and um, so it will be posted later on, on our uh, YouTube channel for the uh, RPM project. Uh, it's also being broadcast on Facebook Live. So those who are on Facebook Live, we welcome you. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, there is closed captioning provided on the Zoom app. Um, if you... Uh, see that you can uh, toggle on or off uh, what we what your preference is on the bottom of the zoom app to do so and um, we'll be doing question and answers at the end of the presentation um, so we've we saw that a lot of people had uh, questions in the registration we appreciate those we selected some of those to get uh, brought up in this meeting and then we'll be doing live question and answers as well but we ask that you um, hold off in the chat and hold off um, obviously in the video and, and speaking um, until we do our question and answers and I'll, I'll give more instructions at that point. Um, so like I mentioned this is a follow-up to uh, previous town hall meetings that we had for the uh, new stage of work that we we're coming into in the Lawrence to Bryn Mawr modernization area. Um, tonight we'll be zooming in on Berwyn station and its service impacts um because of the new work that we'll be coming into and then also the the impacts to the surrounding community around the station uh, due to the construction so um before we get to the presentation wanted to give a moment to alderman osterman of the 48th ward of the city of chicago um alderman we'll have your video come on and uh, feel free to give some words sounds good uh, I want to welcome everyone uh, to tonight's meeting with the CTA to talk about the uh, uh, construction that's about to start. So in less than two weeks, uh, the Berwyn CTA station, the Lawrence CTA station will be closed and construction will begin in earnest uh, along the red line from Ardmore on the north all the way down to Leland. Um, this is a massive project, the largest in CTA's history largest in our community since the extension of uh, Lakeshore Drive in uh, I think of the 30s or early 40s. Um, there are going to be significant impacts uh, to ridership, significant impacts to residents, um, significant Im impacts to businesses. Um, we have worked very, very hard with the CTA, uh, the Chambers of Commerce, residents in the community to prepare everyone for this. Um, and we are about to kind of embark upon the actual construction. Um, we're going to get through this together as a community. Uh, when it's done at the end of 2024, uh, we're going to have a brand new um, ADA accessible station at Berwyn, um, at Bryn Mawr, at Argyle, at Lawrence uh, that will be here for uh, hopefully the next 100 years. So um, these stations and the line itself are all 100 years old. Um, so this is work that has to happen, work that's been funded by the federal, state, and local governments, um, and um, really important work that needs to happen. Uh, the challenge for all of us and why you're going to be here with us tonight is really understanding the differences and how that we're going to get through the project, understanding that if you currently take the Berwyn Station, you're going to have to go to Bryn Mawr or Argyle or, or take one of the buses that are available. Um, but our goal now and in the future is to really kind of work with everyone in the neighborhood to kind of get through this massive project. I'm confident we can do that, um, but appreciate you're here tonight and looking forward to working with you uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Alderman. 
we appreciate working with you and the support from you and your staff. So thank you. Okay, we're going to move to the presentation portion of the meeting. Uh, for that, I'm going to turn it to our first speaker, Jeff Wilson. He is the Director of Government and Community Relations for the CTA RPM Project. Good evening, everybody. Nice to have you with us tonight on this Tuesday uh, dreary evening. My name is Jeff Wilson, and as Jesse said, I'm the Director of Government and Community Relations for the CTA. Um, before I get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to both Alderman Osterman and his staff. Um, Ali, if you can remember, 12 years ago, we actually embarked on a discussion from Berwyn to talk about the possibilities in the future of the station. And here we are on May 16th, we're about to break ground and uh, start in earnest the massive construction of the LBMM project, Lawrence, Argyle, Berwyn, and Bryn Mawr. And uh, we couldn't be more excited. And I'm glad everybody here is along for the ride. Uh, because when we're done in 2024, there's going to be a modern 21st century accessible to everybody, all citizens of Chicago, um, for this station and the rest of them uh, within this uh, portion of the RPM, Red Purple Modernization Project area. So with that, I want to say thank you to Ali, Dan, and Alan, and the Alderman for uh, all their support. So thank you. Um, as we get started, I want to just tell everybody that um, on May 16th, as the Alderman has stated in the past, uh, we are going to have many more meetings as we uh, moving forward. We're going to come back to you this summer with several more meetings to talk about more of the impacts and more of the uh, the uh, work that's going to be done through 2024. So um, next slide, please. Here we have a uh, picture of the current view of the Berwyn station. Uh, as you can imagine, the new station is going to be rid of all those columns. It's going to be uh, incredibly different. Um, and uh, we are all super excited to see this uh, finally modernized and accessible. Next slide, please. Here we have a picture of the brand new station, as you will see it in 2024. Um, it's going to be a lot brighter. It'll be have more uh, bigger windows so you can see in from the street. Also, the signage and wayfinding is going to be a lot better. Um, and as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, there's going to be more bike racks. Uh, the bike racks is a huge element that the alderman and community has asked for, and CTA is uh, moving forward with that. So we're excited to have more bike racks as well. Next slide, please. And here you can see the auxiliary uh, exit uh, that we are going to have built. Um, as you can see, there's no columns in the middle street anymore, which gives a huge, uh, great line of sight for both pedestrians, security, um, that uh, is something that we're really proud of that we were able to do with this new track structure. And as you can see as well, the auxiliary exit will have butt racks as well. And the signage wayfinding and lighting above is gonna be uh, brand new. Next slide, please. So I'd like to take a second to talk to you about the timeline. Um, as you know, between 2019 and 2021, we've been engaged in the utility relocation work that's been taking place in this area. And for that, we've had to get all the utility out of the way so that we can actually move forward with building a station. And as I've said earlier, and the Alderman stated, on May 16th, we're gonna begin the massive construction project that will move forward through the uh, end of 2022 and beginning of 2023, at which point we're gonna start the stage B, which we will talk about further in this uh, presentation. Next slide, please. So here we wanna do is talk to you about what this work is. Very simply put, the construction during stage A is gonna be on the east side of the tracks. So the east side will be the construction, and the west side of the tracks is gonna be the transit. So trains will be running on the east side so that CTA and Walsh floor will put a barrier between east and west side of the tracks, basically straight down the middle, so that we can construct the, um, demolish the bankment, reconstruct it, and put in the new tracks and signal equipment. Um, this work will be, uh, the demolition component definitely will be very loud and um, as you can see from this map, it's going to be from Lawrence to Berwyn. During the construction, we're going to be moving north to south, beginning at Bryn Mawr, 
Um, but you will see work being take, taking place throughout the whole LBMM zone. Next slide, please. So here's a little better look of what I'm talking about. So Berwyn is gonna close for the rest of the uh, reconstruction of the station. Um, basically we need, the reason we had to close Berwyn is because we need the entire footprint and the footprint of the current station is actually smaller than the rest of them other than Lawrence. So we had to close Berwyn in, in order to do that relocation, the reconstruction work. Um, for the remainder of the construction, we encourage you to use the temporary stations at Bryn Mawr or Argyle. The eastern two most line of the tracks, as I said earlier, are going to be for the construction, demolition, and uh, track and signal work. Next slide, please. So as you can see on your screen, we have equipment, renderings of the equipment. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to demolish this 100-year-old structure. Uh, we have a picture of the equipment that's going to be utilized in this. In the middle of your, the uh, screen in the presentation, this is what we're going to be using to drill the new uh, track foundation. And this will go down approximately 6 to 80 feet to support the new structure. And then we're going to come in and start building the new tracks. Um, and we're going to be talking more about that both in this presentation and as well uh, this summer when we come back to the community to talk more about details of how this construction is rolling out and the other equipment that we're going to be rolling in to do the work. Next slide, please. So as I said, we're going to be demolishing the 11 viaducts that cross the streets. And this is all going to be happening during stage A beginning on May 16th. Um, this work is going to be loud and noisy, and there's going to be trucks moving in and out of the zone. Um, we're working very closely with the chambers, with the alderman's office, with the city, uh, and the con contractor, Walsh Floor, to make sure that we mitigate as much as possible to make the impacts as uh, less impactful as possible during the construction. Um, during this period of time, in order to clear scan the streets, uh, the, the columns in the street and do the demolition work, uh, Walsh Floor is going to be constructing ramps uh, in the intersections that allow for some of the equipment to come and access the viaduct uh, and the CTA right away. This uh, provides us with a better way to do less impacts in the community. Next slide, please. Here you have a foundation of a new track structure. Um, this is one of the equipment I said earlier that's going to be building the um, foundations and uh, the caissons and the columns. Next slide, please. And here we have the gantry. This gantry is a new piece of equipment that uh, nobody's ever seen in the city of Chicago. This is an innovative way that Walsh Floor has introduced on how we're gonna rebuild the track structure uh, moving forward through 2022. This piece of massive equipment, which is about the size of a football field, is going to be introduced into the community in early 2022. What you see in the yellow is the gantry itself. And the gantry is something that lifts, lifts up the individual box girders to form the foundations of the new track structure. We're gonna be coming back into the community later this summer to talk more about the specifics of how we load the gantry in and how we are gonna bring these box girders into the construction area. Stay tuned. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, so before we get into the impacts and mitigations, I want to introduce my friend and colleague, Tammy Chase. Tammy is the Director of Communications for the CTA and the Red Purple Modernization Project. Tammy? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, appreciate the introduction. Uh, appreciate being here with you all this evening. Um, it's a lot, and, and we know that it's a lot uh, that we are, uh, in terms of the information, in terms of the impacts, um, so we're here to, to, again, to lay it all out for you, be as transparent as, as, we, as we can about the impacts and what we will do to uh, minimize some of the impacts and, and make it your, your life a little easier. Um, and particularly, we're focusing tonight on the area around the Berwyn Station between Paul Morrow and Foster. So let's cover the impacts that um, you can expect from this work. Um, they include um, a fair amount of noise and vibration. Um, some street closures, which I'll cover in a minute, alley closures as well uh, on the west side of Winthrop along our tracks, all the way from Thorndale south to Leland, 
and we'll cover more of that in a moment. Um, there will be uh, dust. There will be tr a lot of truck traffic, a lot of equipment coming in and out, as well as traffic lane and occasional sidewalk closures as well. So some of the things that CTA is, is doing with its contractor Walsh floor um, it will minimize some of those impacts. And that includes street sweeping, you know, keeping the area as clean as possible, as well as dust mitigation through the use of, of water hoses. Um, that's, that's a priority for us to keep your, your neighborhood as clean as possible. Um, we also will perform the noisiest activities during the daytime hours as much as possible. In addition, the contractor has uh, tools at their disposal, uh, noise barriers, uh, what's called sound blankets, to sort of muffle some of that uh, loudest noise uh, for the community as well. And as we do with all CTA projects, um, rodent abatement efforts will be ongoing. Next slide. So now let's talk a little bit more about alley impacts between Balmoral and Foster. Um, as, as Jeff and I and both mentioned, there will be rolling alley closures um, behind Winthrop Avenue um, this year and next. Um, unfortunately, this does require um, us to block access uh, on occasion as needed to uh, private garages and parking spots. Um, I can tell you that the contractor will make sure that your garbage and recycling pickup continue without interruption. So let's get into a little bit of more detail between Balmoral and Foster on the, um, the type of closure. So one of the close, type of closures that there will be in the alleys is a daily closure, um, just as it sounds, about seven in the morning to five to seven at, in the evening. Um, in this area, we do see these um, starting to occur in the summer of, uh, well, summer of 2021, this summer through uh, next summer. Um, that is to um, facilitate some of the, the demolition related work. Um, there will also be extended alley closures, which as it sounds is, is um, can be several days or weeks at length. In fact, we think there'll be about four to six weeks per block working from north um, to south. Um, that will be in the, uh, the fall uh, time frame. There will also be some extended alley closures um, later on uh, in early 2022 through spring of 2022 to start building the new track uh, structure. Next slide, please. All right, so let's turn to, um, to, to uh, street impacts. There will be uh, weekend closures of some streets, um, uh, major streets, and there will be uh, weekday closure, well, like, sorry, I should say extended closures of uh, uh, side streets as well, and we'll go through those now. Next slide, please. All right, starting at Balmoral, um, we do expect there to be extended street closures uh, starting um, as early as June. Um, that is our expectation at this time. Um, going on to the late summer, this is when we have that really impactful uh, demolition work. Um, we also predict uh, long-term extended closures in early 22 to actually build the new structure. Um, with this work, there will be occasional parking lane uh, closures as well as sidewalk closures. This is again, just to keep uh, pedestrians safe as well as drivers when we're doing this, this impactful work. Next slide, please. Uh, turning to Berwyn Avenue, um, the impacts there will be on weekends only. We, uh, there will be two weekends, um, one in the late summer, one more in the early fall. This will be related to demolition and foundation, uh, demolition work and then uh, new foundation work. Um, also, there will be similar uh, parking lane closures, occasional sidewalk closures as well. Next slide, please. For Foster Avenue, this will also be a weekend only closures, two weekends in the fall for the demo work that we mentioned. Um, this, uh, some similar impacts on parking uh, lane closures as well as sidewalk closures. Next slide, please. Um, so as, as we mentioned, the, the contractor is committed to providing parking for those folks who cannot access their garages during construction. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Marcy Jensen uh, from Walsh Floor to discuss the details of that. Marcy. Thank you, Tammy. I'm Marcy Jensen, Community Outreach for Walsh Floor. Stage A construction will intermittently block parking for residents on the west side of Winthrop 
from Leland to Thorndale who park along the tracks. Walsh Floor is providing alternate parking during these interruptions. The locations of our alternate parking lots are pictured here. Some alleys will be closed on a daily basis from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and residents will have access to their own parking at the end of the workday. Some alleys will be closed on an extended basis. There will be one long interruption of approximately four to six weeks uh, per alley and other interruptions of about three to four days uh, per garage as we progress down the alley. Beginning in May on the north end of the project between Balmoral and Ardmore, there will be daily closures. The longest closure in this area um, will be um, the extended alley closure uh, around the Berwyn uh, stop between Balmoral and Foster will be between September and November of this year. Uh, affected residents can use our parking app to secure one of these free alternate parking spaces. If you are an affected resident, contact me for more information about how to access the parking app. And my contact information is listed uh, on the screen. Thank you very much, Tammy. Thank you, Marcy. Um, I wanted to add, I, I failed this, to mention this earlier, um, you know, we're, we're providing some general time frames on when your alley will close or when certain streets will close. Um, the specifics will be announced to you ahead of time. Um, you will know in advance when um, your garage will be blocked or when certain streets will, will, will be closed for construction. Um, as we've been doing now, we use construction activity notices. We post those throughout the community, including on garages, um, as well as online through construction alerts. If you guys subscribe to our construction alerts, that's great. You're already getting them. If you don't yet, that's okay. We'll cover that at the end. Of the meeting. So I wanted to, to, to point out that, that you won't be surprised. All right, so we've spent a lot of time talking about the community impacts. Um, and so now I wanna talk about the uh, service impacts, the impact of CTA service. So um, at the outset of this project, when we announced it in 2014, we committed to the community that we would continue red and purple line service throughout construction. Um, and we, we will uh, definitely do that. Um, so to do that, it has required us to um, uh, meet some challenges. We have a couple of places where we do have temporary stations um, access to the red line at uh, both Bryn Mawr and Argyle. However, um, we do have to close uh, the Berwyn station as well as the Lawrence station for about three and a half years. Um, there was no location available to build temporary stations. Um, so we do have red line access uh, close to your station, but however, Berwyn did need to close for about three and a half years. Um, that will ha happen on May 16th. Um, so on, on that day, on Sunday, May 16th, you can access the red line uh, either at Bryn Mawr, about a quarter mile north, there's a temporary station there, or, um, I'm sorry, half a mile north in Bryn Mawr, or about a quarter mile south at Argyle. So there is a red line service uh, located pretty close. Uh, the number 36 Broadway connects uh, both stations, and um, in three years, you will have a new accessible Burwood station. Next slide, please. Um, just a, a heads up on uh, changes to our bus service. The number 92 Foster bus, which those of you who take Berwyn know, uh, uh, does a, a stop at the Berwyn station, um, will be rerouted to the Bryn Mawr station. Um, the number 146 will continue its um, stop and layover at the Berwyn Broadway uh, intersection as it does today. So there will be no change to that service. Next slide, please. So we've spent the, uh, the, the time of this uh, presentation talking about stage A, which uh, runs, as you know, starting May 16th through late 2022. There is a stage B, as, as Jeff covered uh, earlier in this presentation, that will start in late 2022 and uh, till 2024 when we completed it with the stations and we reopen them. So just to give you a, just a quick uh, glimpse at what stage B will look like, uh, Berwyn Station will remain closed. You will still be able to access the red line uh, temporary stations at Bryn Mawr or at Argyle. Um, those uh, those uh, formats in terms of where you access the temporary station entrances 
Um, we'll change a little bit. We will give you a lot more information as we get closer to stage B on that. So don't, don't worry about um, trying to take, every, take everything down right now. Um, and stage B will be rebuilding the other two tracks that, uh, that um, will be used during stage A for service. Um, and again, Berwin coming 2024. Next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to my colleague, Jesse Thomas. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Tammy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna finish off the presentation just with this slide on, on our contact information. So uh, these are kind of the important links um, and uh, places to go to get information um, and contact us, the RPM outreach team. Uh, for any questions or issues that uh, you have. Um, you're already engaging with us by watching this and we appreciate that, but we welcome all questions or um, uh, other outreach that uh, you need from us. So um, first of all, definitely start with the uh, standard uh, CTA transit alerts and updates. That's that first link there. Um, but we also have our own website that uh, is everything that we have about RPM uh, in, in one website. So that's transitchicago.com slash RPM. Um, we have our email address where a real life person checks it every day. Feel free to send questions to that. We do our best to get answers and uh, respond to those quickly. Um, and then as was mentioned before, we put out alerts that are for um, construction impacts specifically. Um, so we highly recommend if you're not already to sign up for those alerts. So it's transitchicago.com slash RPM alerts. Um, those, that way you can customize where, uh, which stations or which um, areas of the project area you live or are interested in. And you can get alerts customized for those, those areas. Uh, so once again, our email address and then a phone number uh, that you can call us on. We, we really recommend that you um, stay in touch when you have questions. Okay, and then also, of course, we are on social media. So please follow us on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we, we put out our uh, alerts about construction on that. We put out fun things that are interesting about the construction and about uh, the neighborhoods in general, and all the businesses and wonderful things that are in Edgewater and Uptown um, for, for this project. So please follow. Okay, so that concludes our uh, presentation portion of this meeting. Um, we are going to be uh, starting our Q&A um, panel. So those who are panel members, I would ask that you turn on your video. Uh, we have representatives from uh, CTA and then from uh, Walsh Floor, the contractor with us. We have subject matter experts and engineers um, that can answer questions. Uh, like I mentioned before, we will be going over uh, some of the questions that we received beforehand that we didn't think would be necessarily clear from our presentation, but we wanted to bring up because we hadn't heard them before. Um, so I'll, I will be uh, reading those questions um, to uh, the panel and we'll get answers from those. At that point, we'll switch over to live questions where um, if you have a question, you are welcome to ask for the panel. So to do so, um, just use the Zoom um, uh, reactions button. So it's down in the bottom of the uh, Zoom app. There's a reactions button and then there's a raise hand button. So when you raise your hand there, that will let me know that you have a question. And at that point, I'll turn it over to you um, and we'll unmute you. You can turn on your video if you'd like and uh, ask your question. So we, we'd ask that you ask one question um, so we can get to everyone who has one and uh, it's 6.30 right now, I'm seeing. We, we go till seven is the time that we'll be going for this meeting. Um, but any questions that we don't get to, um, we will be answering in the uh, afterwards and when posting online. So if you have a question um, that comes to mind that we don't have time to get to, I encourage you to put it in our chat feature for in Zoom so that we can get to that later. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, start with these questions that we already received from the registration. Uh, I have a few that will go to Walsh floor first. So Rob, I will send it to you. And then um, for the panel members, uh, if you're gonna talk for the first time, please just introduce yourself so we know who we all are. 
Okay, so um, the first question, Rob, um, how long will Berwyn be closed to pedestrians? Hi, I'm uh, Rob Cheeseman, the uh, construction manager uh, from Walsh Floor. Um, so Berwyn uh, pedestrian closures will occur mainly when we're doing the overhead work, such as uh, demolition of the existing bridge or uh, erection of the new segmental span, which uh, Jeff showed. Um, so it'll be pretty short-term closures uh, for pedestrians on Berwyn. Great, thank you. A couple more for Walsh Floor. Is the project on schedule? Yeah, it, it's on schedule. Uh, we're within uh, CTA's goals for the schedule right now. Uh, we're getting into the stage a little bit later than we wanted, but we're, we're still on schedule. Okay. And then when will the noise reach its peak? Um, the noisiest operation that we're going to have for the, uh, the construction is going to be the sheet pile uh, installation that's uh, done so we can uh, remove the uh, existing embankment and still keep the tracks active. And that'll be a relatively short duration um, at the start of the project, moving from uh, north to south. Okay, thanks, Rob. I'm gonna uh, turn over to some for CTA. Um, these next couple I will send to you, Tammy. Will Purple Line Express trains be stopping at Red Line stations during the two track operation? No, uh, currently our plan is to continue the nonstop Purple Line Express service uh, between Howard and Wilson. Okay, um, here's one and it's kind of related to one that I saw in the chat as well. So uh, will there be shuttle buses? No, we're not planning shuttle buses at this time. And, and the, part of the reason for that is we do have temporary stations at two of the four stations that will be reconstructed. Um, the stations are also connected uh, conveniently by the number 36 Broadway. So at this time, we believe we have enough service to uh, meet all of the ridership demands for our customers. Okay. A um, couple more for you, um, Tammy. Um, will the train run more or less frequently through the temporary stops? We're planning on the same level of service that we currently are offering. Um, the, the, the number of trains that we run is determined by ridership demand. Um, and so that will ebb and flow as, as ridership increases or decreases. So related to the construction, there's, there's no change in the number of trains that we will be running at this point. Great, and one more for you, Tammy. Why is Berwyn closed for more than three years? Um, the reason we have to close Berwyn is it does take a long time to reconstruct a station that uh, is also in the middle of a very urban dense area and we are running service throughout the construction period. Um, so that, that's why it takes as long as it does. Um, so we understand that it's incredibly inconvenient. Three years is sort of a you know, gasp. That's a long time to go without your station. But in the end of it, um, it will be worth it. We'll have a modern um, station that has escalator, elevator um, access, uh, bright, modern, that'd be much more comfortable experience for our customers. All right, thanks, Tammy. Um, I've got two here for Jeff that I will send, still on CTA. Will, will there be retail space in the new station? Uh, good evening, everybody. No, there will not be any retail space in the new stations. However, um, this is a great opportunity for me to tell everyone to go support local business. Um, the station construction is going to impact a lot of the, the uh, business owners in the area. And um, let's all work with our chambers and local businesses to help support them during this time. Um, but no, see, there will be no concession spaces built at the stations. But go local business, please. Second that. All right, next one, Jeff. Um, the East Alley between Berwyn and Foster. Is there, a, if there is Foster, an emergency, yeah. sorry, if there is an emergency where we need to get in, such as moving, who do we contact? Uh, you can contact myself, Jeff Wilson. I'm the uh, person that can get uh, the alley opened up for emergency 
purposes. Um, my contact information is at the end of the slide. Um, for anybody that doesn't uh, already know, um, my uh, information is very available for anybody that needs to get a hold of me. Okay, great. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Jesse. I've got three more, um, and I'm going to go back to Walsh for, for these. Um, so, Rob, uh, will the overpass be raised so regular semis and trucks will be able to get underneath and over yes. the alleys as yeah. well? Yeah, thankfully, uh, that's part of the purpose of this project is get that clearance. Uh, right now in the in the Berwyn area, the, uh, the new bottom of structure will be about 15 to 17 feet above the roadway where currently it's 11 to 13 feet. So the, the track itself will be roughly five to 10 feet higher, depending on location. Okay, great. And then is it known currently whether both Foster and Berwyn will be ever closed simultaneously? Uh, no, it won't be. Um, those are both streets where we're only allowed uh, weekend closures and we can't have both of those uh, closed at the same time. Okay, great. This one is also for Walsh floor, but I will pass it to Marcy Jensen. When will we be notified of how to access our alternate parking? How much heads up will we get before alleys are blocked? Oh, Marcy, it looks like you're on mute. We will give you as much advance notice as we can, uh, up to two weeks. Um, Please, if you park uh, along the tracks there, please send me your contact information. Um, you should have probably already received one notification from the parking app company uh, if we have your contact information. So you will receive multiple notifications from multiple sources. That would be me, the CTA, the CTA's uh, CANs and posting on their website, as well as the, as the parking app company. Okay, great. Well, that concludes the uh, the questions that from registrants that we wanted to go over and we thought were most helpful. Um, if anyone has questions they'd like to ask the panel, this would be the time to use your reaction buttons to raise your hand. Not seeing any at the moment, but I'll give it a minute. I'll look through the chat as well. Um, I'm looking at the chat. I see a, a message from Melissa. Uh, it says, uh, it's asking about um, running additional buses or alternatives for someone who doesn't live close to the Bryn Mawr or Argyle stations. Let's see, it says, I live between Ashland and Damon and don't believe these, don't believe the options for those of us who live further west are being well served by the plans. There's someone from CTA who could pick that one up. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this, Jesse. Uh, it's Chris Bouchel, the project executive. Uh, if Ms. Franzen would like to contact us through the um, uh, some of the contact uh, contact uh, information, contact addresses we provided in, in one of the slides, we'd be happy to work out some travel options with her. Um, the best travel options that we can offer, um, given the circumstance. Okay. All right, I'm uh, still not seeing anyone raising hands. Got a quiet bunch around Berwyn, I guess. Um, I'll give it another few seconds. Does anyone else from the panel have anything they wanna add or uh, share with the group? I, I will add one thing. Um... Jesse, to the to the group, we we do appreciate your patience um, during this time when we're when we're doing this construction. Um, I think uh, time has shown, and our experience has shown that uh, this kind of investment in the community, the kind of investment that the alderman has been focused on, bringing forward for a number of years, um, that uh, various mayors that we've worked with have brought forward in terms of this project. Certainly, the current mayor Lightfoot, um, it brings huge benefit, but it does bring um, impacts. We're going to work hard to minimize those impacts. 
Um, in some cases, just to kind of underline what Tammy said about the Berwyn station, this isn't a renovation. Um, you know, we've done some significant renovations in this area as we started the planning process almost a decade ago. Um, and it is a complete and, and utter replacement of the station. And really the places where we could put temporary stations, um, we were pretty constrained in that because of the spaces we had adjacent to the right of way and ultimately where we needed to build, um, particularly to over the East Alley. So there was really only two locations where we could find the literal space um, to put a temporary station while also building, um, while building a new one, a completely new one. Um, that adding to the, the factors that Tammy talked about, which is we're gonna continue to provide 24-7 um, service during this time period, um, make it uh, a challenge and an expensive challenge to build new stations um, and add somewhat to the length of that construction time. So we appreciate your patience. We hope in the end, um, you will find it a worthwhile endeavor and uh, a good investment in your community. Hi everybody, I just wanted to add to um, Chris's narrative with regards to the impacts. Um, as I stated earlier, we are working very closely with the Alderman's office and the business community in the area. And um, Walsh Floor has been really generous and having their workforce go out and support those businesses. And if you are a business owner that is on this call and would like more information about how we can help you uh, with regards to supporting your business, please reach out to any of us on the panel. However, I did put my contact information again in the chat box. Um, but as Chris mentioned earlier, my contact information is at the end of the um, presentation. So thank you very much, everybody. Hey, Jesse, I got one thing. Um, sure. We're, um, uh, yeah, like Chris said, we appreciate your patience as we get this project done. And, and I would encourage you, again, reach out to Jeff if, if, if you have any questions, no matter how small. We're pretty responsive. Um, and if, if there's something that's not going well or not the way you thought it'd be or something that's giving you a hard time, please feel free to reach out. That's what we're here, just to work with everybody in the community, make sure this is as least impactful as possible. Thanks, and Jesse, Rob. Jesse, you might mm -hmm. notice we got another question in the chat. Yeah, I'm seeing that from. I, I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Andres. Uh, it's. Um, it looks like many residents have limited walking ability. What it? What would it, uh, advise them about traveling and using public transportation? Uh, is that question as regards to accessing the the, the stations, the temporary stations? Is this a uh, Mobility issue uh, with regards to being able to get on CTA, it's or maybe just a general a general question, Jeff. Um, yeah, you know, I think that there's a couple of things that to bear in mind um, as you're helping people in this neighborhood. Um, uh, we are endeavoring. The temporary stations are not going to be accessible. They are um, a similar sort of circumstance to, uh, for, from accessibility with the current stations. They're not vertically accessible. Although where we can, we're making various um, accessibility improvements that are are feasible within the scope of a temporary station. Um, so there are, are various types of improvements um, that we put out: uh, uh, edge strips on the platforms. Um, different types of handrails uh, where we can put a configuration that um, eases people's uh, travel through the area while not making the station completely accessible is, is still a benefit. Further, when we put in, um, when we construct stuff and we have to put traffic, um, we have to put, uh, tell people to go to this sidewalks closed, we call it maintenance of traffic, but it's really um, barricades and other things when we're either constructing off the street and impacting a sidewalk or in the street and potentially impacting a sidewalk. Um, we're really very careful to make sure that those accessible, those are accessible routes so that um, you wouldn't find someone who's uh, walking through that area where there would be changes of elevation that would be abrupt um, or create issues um, if they were sight impaired um, or, or um, mobility impaired. So, even in the temporary construction that we're doing, where we can, we're making improvements to ease accessibility, um, and to and where we're doing um, active construction and putting in maintenance of traffic or barricades, we're trying to do um, our best to make sure that those are accessible. And if there are any issues with those, that's another good thing to reach out to the project team. Um, where we hear of those issues as a team, we'll work together 
um, to remove those barriers. Um, in terms of walking further because the stations are closed, you know, our best recommendation for, for any folks who are impacted in that fashion is to, is to look for alternative bus service. And luckily our network in this area is um, very comprehensive, offers a number of choices um, and strong existing service, um, even in, in the midst of the um, pandemic. So we'll continue to reinforce that and try to improve those routes and review that ridership periodically. And certainly as we get back together to provide you with updates, if there are continuing concerns about your ride, um, if you know concerns about crowding on the Broadway, Broadway bus or other issues, we want to hear about them. We want to talk to you about them. Um, some we can handle within the project. Some we have to go back to our larger organization and, and talk about. But the one thing you can count on is we'll bend over backwards to provide a level of transparency and honesty in our answers. Thanks, Chris. Um, uh, we're getting bad, Jesse. If you don't mind, um, sure. I just wanted to add that. Uh, the Alderman's office has been very helpful in getting CTA information about where there are issues within the construction site with regards to accessibility and mobility issues. So um, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're, as Chris said, uh, I don't know about bending over backwards. I mean, I'm 52 years old and popping a leaf like crazy, but um, we are working very hard to make sure that everybody has uh, accessibility. So please reach out, as Chris said, thank you. We are getting a couple more in the chat that I will uh, uh, dish out to the panel. Uh, this one's from Barbara. Uh, she's asking, where will the entrance to the Argyle station be? And I'm presuming that's the temp station. I'll throw that out. There. Sure. So for stage A, which is what we're going to get into here in two weeks, the entrance for both uh, platforms, northbound and southbound, will be on the north side of Argyle just across the street or just basically where it is right now. And then for stage B, we'll have a temporary station that'll service uh, northbound and southbound traffic with entrances at uh, Winona and Foster on the uh, east side of the embankment. Thanks, Rob. We're actually getting another one from Linda asking generally where the temp station uh, entrances are. So can you go over Bryn Mawr as well? Yeah, Bryn Mawr, uh, the south, for southbound at Bryn Mawr, the, uh, the station entrance will be on Broadway, just north of Bryn Mawr. And then the, north, uh, the northbound uh, uh, platform access will be where it is currently on the south side of Bryn Mawr. And then for stage, stage B, it'll be a, a southbound service only. And that uh, entrance will be uh, in that uh, small lot that's on the uh, southeast side of the current station. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm getting a uh, bus service question also. Um, so I'll send this one to CTA. Uh, it's from Marcy and John. It says, where will the 146 bus go from Broadway and Berwyn when Berwyn is closed? I can take that one um, if no one else will. Uh, the bet the we we have a diagram I believe in here um, that shows what the alternative bus routing is for stations uh, for um, stops at the various stations that are closing. Um, I believe the answer to this one though is it will still stay on Broadway, but the presentation if you can get a copy of it or we'll post it on the CTA website will show more exactly um, what that alternative uh, where that alternative stop is. But I believe it's right by the station and it just stays on Broadway. Yeah, I, I can add, we'll post that online tonight, so you'll be able to see that, that, that uh, graphic. Okay. Uh, the only other question I'm seeing is about a copy of tonight's presentation that was answered in the chat, but uh, we will be posting the presentation on our website. It'll be on YouTube, and all the people who register will be getting an email follow-up as well, so. Um, looks like Marcy's responding to the uh, or Marcy or John, excuse me, is responding. The 146 usually turns onto Berwyn. When the street is closed, where will the bus go? I'll defer again to that diagram. Um, it shows you pretty accurately where, it, where it's gonna go. Um, so that's really the clearest thing I can do. Um, so. Hang with us. We'll post the presentation. It'll show exactly where that bus is going to go. Uh, 
Okay. Um, just give it a few seconds. If anyone else has any uh, last minute questions, if they raise their hand or put it in the chat, we have we still do have about nine minutes if, if there are questions. Well, while we're waiting for questions, I do want to uh, touch back on the uh, temporary station entrances that Rob covered. Um, there also will be extensive signage as well as CTA personnel, especially in those early days, making sure that people understand when they go to Bryn Mawr or they go to Argyle, hey, this is the new entrance. This is where you go. This is where you're going to go for a while. So um, we will do everything we can to make sure that, that people you know, we lessen the confusion when somebody is actually at the station. Okay, I'm seeing another question um, from from a Pietro. I recently found out that Berwyn Station used to be called Edgewater Beach. Should we reconsider naming it? Is uh, Graham Garfield on this Zoom call? No. We could be on here all night talking about why we can't <laughs> rename it to Bedwater Beach. Um, I'd be more than happy to give you a full explanation. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, CTA uh, and its signage and wayfinding um, basically takes the responsibility of naming stations after the streets that they correspond with. Um, that's why we have multiple Western stations. Um, uh, so, um, but we do have a colleague uh, that can answer this question at uh, very length, and I can actually send you a written response if you'd like. Uh, again, my contact information is in the chat box. Well, and it doesn't preclude um, doing some community identifiers or other types of artworks that we would work with the community on. So it's an interesting idea. We, we do love history in this project. We have um, various historical requirements through the federal grant that we're um, working with and, and really enjoy um, preserving some of the elements of the station and integrating them into the new ones. So hearing some historic information about the community is very interesting. Um, I don't think we're in a position right here to offer up to change the name, but it's an interesting idea and let's keep talking about it. All right, thank you. And yeah, Thanks for the thumbs up. And um, yeah, Jeff's uh, email is in the chat now. So people feel free to email him as much as they want. Whoa, Jesse. <laughs> okay, uh, we still have a few minutes. Any last uh, questions, please raise your hand or feel free to type in the chat. Okay, well, I'm seeing none. I think we'll end about five minutes early, um, but uh, like, like we have all expressed, um, please uh, reach out with any follow-ups or uh, questions as they come up as we start this, uh, this next stage of uh, construction and the project in general. Um, so thank you to our panel members for all being here. I uh, appreciate taking the time out of your evening to answer questions. And again, thank you to all those who joined on Facebook and are here engaging with us. So we hope you all have a great night and uh, don't forget to follow us on social media. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.